So today we're going to talk about parity and I want you to be able to understand how it works, um, how it's calculated, and how it works on a hardware level as well. So I'm going to go over some stuff and then we'll get on there and start drawing and hopefully get a better idea of this concept and how it's implemented. This is really foundational if you want to understand the next step, which is error correcting code. And you'll see that implemented in a lot of server environments or in high speed communications or um, even storing stuff within a hard drive or a solid state medium. Um, the idea of parity and error correcting code doesn't just apply to the RAM sticks in your computer, but it can have a big impact on it. Um, to start with, this is not parity RAM. I know I just waved that up there. This only has eight chips. Usually with parity or error correcting code RAM, you will find a ninth chip in the middle. And that ninth chip is going to be the chip that holds the parity data, and later it will hold the error correcting code data as well. Parity is one or a zero. It is a system state. If it is a one, then everything's normal. If there's a zero, then something happened. And it could be flipped around, it doesn't matter. The idea is that this is a true and false thing. And when a parity error occurs, we're unable to correct it. So a flag will be sent to the processor saying, hey, something happened, or, um, and then from there, it'll be sent to the operating system to read and be like, oh, there's a parity error. We're gonna pop up the screen saying, save your work and shut down the system. Parity normally though, if everything is working fine, it is going to be transparent to the operating system. When I say transparent, it's that the operating system is not involved in the calculation of parity. It's not involved in the, it is not involved in how data is put, put, to, put away or brought back up. That is all on the hardware side. And that is a memory controller that is integrated onto your CPU nowadays. Before a memory controller was like a separate thing and then it got integrated on the Northbridge, and then now it's right in the CPU package. So all that said, let's get to the drawing board and get to understanding this concept a little bit more. So to get parity, we have to understand some basic things first. Data is stored in your computer as a one or a zero. So that's where I say one or zero. And then if we, actually, if we put a bunch of these together, they will form what is called a word. Words in any language are letters that have been put together that create a special meaning when they're all together. And right here, we have a word, and this word is, um, it probably translates to a number or a letter. Um, the idea that is that this is a grouping, and we're going to give it a meaning. At this point, it's data. So, eight bits here. Uh, this is also called a byte. Um, so a byte is just a grouping of eight, eight bits. Um, and then past that you have a kilobyte, which is like 1,024 bytes and so on. I'm not going to explain that system in this video. But for now, I'll just call this a byte. And in this byte, we have ones and we have zeros. Well, I'm going to put our parity over here. And this parity is going to be a one or a zero. And let's figure out how. We're going to count how many ones are in this. So one, two, three, four. That's even. Since it's even, we're going to say it's a zero. And that's, uh, to translate that is, if it was an odd number, we would say it's a one. That's how parity works. If it was an even number, we'll call it a zero. It's just a true or false state. And since these are even, the parity is zero. Now from here, we have eight bits of data. We have a byte of data, and then we have a parity bit. So when we transmit this from, say, our, our memory to our processor, we're gonna send nine bits, but one of those is actually not gonna be data. This is gonna be parity, and we'll use this to see, hey, are these the right bits that we sent? So data can sometimes get messed up in communication. So this is what is a row in memory, and then we have the parity bit. How this would look on the physical memory is you would have eight chips containing, you know, the, 
the columns of, of the first first one and then the columns of the second. And, then would, and when whenever we ask for row one, all those eight chips will ask, you know, hey, row one of our chip, let's feed it the data we have. And that'll be this, this string. It'll all get put together in a word. And then from there, if we have parity memory, we're going to have an extra little chip that's going to hold parity data for that row. So now every row is accounted for. It has a parity bit. Okay, so this is an even number of ones, and it comes up to a zero parity bit. If I was to change one of the zeros into a one, and then calculate our parity again, one, two, three, four, five, well, now the parity bit is wrong. And when we transmit this data in the parity bit, doesn't match up with our actual data, that's when a parity error occurs. And it will flip a flag on the CPU. CPU will then inform the program that's running that something has happened, something changed. And then if you're good and you run a nice operating system, you'll tell the user that a parity error has occurred. Please save your work and restart the system so that everything can just be great. And when you save your work, you want to save it as a different file because if something is wrong here and we've transmitted bad data, well, that, that's not good. It could be the example of in my bank account, if I had a million dollars and then I, I change this one to a zero, well, now I have zero dollars and that's a big problem. So I explained it in the previous video how these errors can occur, how this can turn into a one or how this can turn into a... Uh, a zero. It can be electronic interference, it can be um, radio interference, it could be a loose connection, bad connection, overheating, static, um, and if all that doesn't seem like enough, then cosmic rays are seem to be the number one cause of this. So it's a hiccup from the sun will come in and flip a bit in your computer system and say, oh, I don't want this one there. It's now zero, and you gotta you gotta be able to detect and correct for that. And parity is just one way that we can detect, and then later we'll see the error correcting code is going to correct. So all that said, let's get into hardware and how this parity checking is implemented on the hardware level. And it's usually it's really simple. So let's get into it. So I'm gonna show you how this is implemented on the hardware level. If you know anything about Boolean algebra and logic, that's gonna be a plus, but you don't have to. We're gonna start from the basics with this. A parity check is implemented with a exclusive or gate. And you draw the symbol for that like, uh, like uh, hey artist, come over here. I need you to do this, I can't do it. So this is that exclusive or gate again. And I'm gonna show you how we are gonna implement parity using this and a clever connection of wires. So we're gonna feed, so I have a normal data input that is just kinda of going along its merry way. I can make a copy of that. So we're gonna flip it, we're gonna put that into B. So now I have eight bits going into, we're gonna actually store them and then we'll make a parity bit of, of this as we go. So now we have our data going in and then it's gonna feed through here and then it's gonna go out we're actually going to tie our out back to our A. Now, that seems a little crazy, right? Well, no, not really. So if I feed in a 1 to a B, and then the output, an A starts at 0, by the way. A starts at 0, B is a 1. Now we have 1, and the output is odd. So now we know. And if we were to split this off and take a look at it, it would now be one if we fed in a one on the B. Now we have a parity bit that says, hey, the number you're working with is an odd number. Now, if we were to put a zero through this, it would, you know, zero and zero equal zero. Well, it's not and, it's exclusive or, but the result is zero here. Now let's say we feed in a word like before um, for, for now, I'm only going to use uh, three bytes or four bytes here. So one, zero, one, one. And all of this is going to get fed in here. 
and then after you know after we've pushed all eight bits through here we're, we're then going to take the parity out of this and store it in that ninth chip um, so the idea is that that parity bit gets out of the loop eventually so one goes in and the parity is one one's an odd number zero zero goes in but we also have a one over here so we're still odd we're still odd if we have one zero and then we feed in another data bit which is a one so now we have one and one and that's 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 even that's an even number and then we're going to feed in that last one so we have the zero coming in here and then we have the one now we have one and one is our final parity bit that's the one that that gets sent out so if i was doing just the if i was just doing the first two numbers then i would be left with this one if i was just doing three numbers it would be a zero but since i put the whole four bits through there this is my final parity bit and that would be the one that i save so i will save one zero one one and then one and then this will be the five bits that I save, the five bits I transmit to my CPU for it, it to then check the parity and make sure that everything got there right. Now I think you guys got this. So here I have eight bytes all in rows and I would ask that you guys figure out the parity of each row and if you can pause the video right now and get that figured out, I'll give you guys a second. So now that we have an idea of how this works and how to calculate it, join me for the next video in that how we can use parity to correct memory errors that happen within the computer. Currently, we can't really do that with what we got. Right now, if I, you know, just looked at this and said, ah, oh, the parity is this and something's wrong, well, we can't fix it. We can, at best, ask for the data again, but we're not guaranteed we'll get correct data. I'm gonna leave you guys with two challenges. One is to look up the 99 hats problem or the 100 hats problem. You'll find that on online. And if you use parity in what we learned today, I bet it'll be easy for you to solve. The second is figure out the last time we used parity in computers. Um, what I mean by is parity correct or parity detecting memory. It's been a long time and you don't see it a lot nowadays. Nowadays we have the ECC memory. So I'm gonna see you guys just Look up some parity memory, see how old it is, and see why we don't use it anymore. <laughs> um, so look up parity memory and try to get an idea of what systems it was used on. So this has been Parity. Join me for Error Correcting Code, the sequel to this, where we finally wrap everything together and where this is actually useful for something. <laughs> so I hope this video has taught you about parity, how to calculate it, how do you implement it on the hardware level, how the operating system deals with it, and um, just generally learning about this process. I would appreciate if you guys like the video, subscribe, just follow me along on the journey where we learn everything about computers, even if it's little stuff like parity. <laughs> Bye!